Om Namah Shivaya students. Today we are going to start with class 11 legal studies unit 5 part 3 family justice system. In this session students we will have post independence the human rights and gender perspective and case study 1 based on equity in education. This will be followed with the assignment related to this session that is unit 5 part post-independence era. Students now let us talk about the, in the previous session we had a discussion about the uh, existence of the family law uh, in the ancient period and the transition to it during the medieval period. Uh, the, in the medieval period we had a discussion about the um, Mitakshara and the Dayabhag tradition of the uh, law that was followed in Bengal and in other parts of the subcontinent. Now in this part we are talking about the after independence era that is uh, since 1947. Efforts were made to develop a uniform civil code for dealing with matters of personal law. It is started with the uniform Hindu code bill which attempted to combine the varied regional customs and usages. In 1951 it was shelved due to much opposition since the Indian constitution had adopted the word secular as an important feature of Indian Republic. The uniform family law was seen as biased in favor of Hindu majority community and unsecular. In similar manner in 1955-56 the parliament adopted and codified the four different major legislations governing the family and personal law matters of the Hindu community. The Hindu Marriage Act of 1955, Hindu Succession Act of 1956, Hindu Minority and Guardianship Act 1956 and Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act 1956. So this, uh, please note down these are the very significant changes that was brought down in the uh, family law in uh, the constitution of India. Accordingly, Christian, Parsis and Sikhs have their own codified marriage act. Muslims are governed by the Sariya. And the traditional communities continue to pr uh, practice their uncodified customary laws. As mentioned earlier, although the Indian constitution in article 44 provides for a goal or aspiration for achieving a uniform civil code, this has never been take up, taken up seriously for the fear of the widespread communal violence. What is communal violence? The violence raised uh, due to the religion or the sectarian, uh, sectarian uh, religion of the different uh, sects existing in India. Human rights and the germ, uh, gender perspectives. There are various provisions in the constitution of India that are specified for gender equality. What is gender equality? Gender equality, the equality between the male and the female. It's called uh, gender equality. The preamble or, the, or to the introduction to the Indian constitution resolves to secure justice, liberty, equality and dignity for all. Furthermore, Article 14 to uh, Article 14 provides for equal treatment and Article 15 prohibits discrimination based on religion, race, caste, sex or place of birth. Thus the idea of equality is strongly emphasized in the constitution. According to Article 14 and 15, all the people living in India should be considered equal. Thus the idea of equality is strongly emphasized in the constitution. However, exceptions exist too. For example, Article 25 and 26 of the constitution provide for freedom of religion that includes freedom of conscience and free profession, practice and propagation of religion, as well as freedom to manage religious affairs. The religious communities have used these provisions to argue that modifying their family laws would be interfering with their freedom of a religion. So article 14 and 15 talks about more equality uh, based on uh, the and uh, prohibits uh, discrimination based on religion. 
but according to article 25 and 26 of the constitution it provides for uh, freedom of religion to all and freedom of conscience and free profession to all thus uh, the gender equality still prevails now case study if we talk about equity in education my village in Siunzu has a high illiteracy level only a small number get educated and the most affected is the girl child the community previously did not see the importance of educating the girl child but this has changed since a woman association together with a local administration sent a team of a uh, team to educate us on the importance of education especially for the girl child i am happy since then my parents don't want to be left behind in the quest of taking the girl child to school my parents have since seen the importance of education and taking me and my siblings to school without discrimination of us being girls. Counselors engage the community with the teaching them that a girl will always come back and help her people. This is about the equity in education. That means equality in the sphere of education. For those who promote the traditional religious value, the above gender equity provisions are contrary to their customary methods of law. For example, the traditional Hindu religious legal methods found in the law of Manu provide for unequal treatment of law and punishment based on gender as well as caste. So according to the Manu Smriti and the laws uh, codified in it, it provides for unequal treatment of law and punishment based on the gender as well as caste. So gender inequality also exists with the Islamic legal tradition. Such competing gender inequalities of these two communities in particular also prevented the adoption of uniform civil code, which has continued to remain as unrealized aspirational provision in the constitution. The modern Hindu family law were adopted by reconfiguring the traditional religious law and further based on the modern constitutional values. However, complete gender equity has not been achieved, but the instances of gender inequality existing in the present day Hindu family law include the Hindu Marriage Act, Section 5.3 prescribes marriageable age for girls as 18 and for boy it is 21. The Hindu Succession Act provides the different methods of intensive uh, anti-state without a will. Succession of property for male and female in these states. The Hindu Minority and Guardianship Act Section 6 prohibits a mother to act as a child's natural guardian unless the father is dead or otherwise disqualified. And the Hindu Adoption and Maintenance Act Section 6 prohibits a mother to give her child in adoption unless the father is dead or otherwise disqualified. This is about the Hindus, Hindu family law. Some examples believed to promote gender inequalities is the Islamic family laws include the practice of polygamy is permitted in Islamic law. Polygamy, uh, that means uh, having uh, more than one husband. The common uh, view, polygamy is the practice of having more than one wife. The common view that a husband can divorce his wife by the triple talaq, which is a pronouncement of divorce three times, is one breath. And a Muslim husband is required to pay maintenance to the divorced wife only during the iddat period of three months. This is according to the uh, Islamic family law and it further promotes gender inequality. Some examples believed to promote gender inequality in the Islamic family law is uh, this which we have just now read. Now there are other practical challenges in achieving gender equ equity in the realm of the family law. One of the foremost being the lack of information about family laws that are applicable to respective communities. 
most residents of the rural India know neither the minimum age of marriage nor that dowry is prohibited. Also, they are unaware of the legal grounds of divorce and prohibition of practice of bigamy or polygamy. That is having uh, more than one wife. Assignment that has to be done in Unit 5, Part 3 are as follows. Discuss the administration and development of Hindu and Muslim personal laws in British India. Number 2. Write a note on the following. A. Family law and gender equality. B. Statutory laws governing different communities in India. Now in the next session, Unit 5, Part 4, Family Justice Systems, we will continue with. Om Namah Shivaya.